but you have to become, at your own pace, at your own comfort level, more and more and more as the Creator is. And you have to not be afraid of embracing your power. And you have to know that you're a good person, that you are an abundant being that does not perceive lack and therefore does not need to steal happiness from others in order to be happy him or herself. This is where the false humility story comes into play. It's like, well, if I am powerful, then other people must lack power. If I am happy, then other people must be lacking happiness. If I am happy, I can only be happy by stealing it from you because there's only so much water on this planet, because there's only so much money in the banks, because there's only so much happiness around. How does God see life? How does the Creator see life? How does your higher self perceive this moment? as one of many infinite possible realities, all coexisting right here, right now, with no lack for anyone in any aspect of life. That is how it sees creation. If you want to become more like it, you have to see more as it sees. How do you do that? Clear out any perspective that makes you feel bad. That's where the guidance system of the emotional body comes in. It is your higher self letting you know the fastest way to merge with it, to become more like it in form, in expression. Whenever you feel bad, it is letting you know that you're placing your vibration further away from the truth of creation. Whenever you feel good, it's letting you know that the way you see life is rooted in a vibrational state, a position, that is closer in alignment to the way that the Creator sees itself. So in order to attract an amazing life, pay attention to when you feel bad. Transform the negative perceptions that distort you further away from the one and replace it with a perspective that is holistic, beautiful, compassionate and abundant and infinite in nature and you'll feel instantly better. Why? Because the emotional body is not a random mechanism, although we've polluted it quite a bit. Make it seem random, but it is a very clear guidance system even now in our polluted state of higher self communicating to lower self whether or not our perspective is right or wrong. Very simple. Yes, there is right and wrong in that sense. Not value-wise. Everyone is right. Everyone has validity, equal validity. But in terms of your perspective being correct or incorrect, that's absolutely there. And incorrect perspectives still add to the expansion of creation, so it's still allowed, it's still valid, it's still loved. However, from a very individual, relative point of view, the quickest way to become more as your higher self already is, is to notice when you feel bad and change your perspective to one that feels amazing which is literally your higher self entering your being, letting you know, thank you for widening your channel to receive more of me. (sighs) This is what feels good. When it feels bad, it means you're contracting yourself. You're pinching, you're squeezing the flow, the amount of flow of higher self that is possible for you. So something is up, something is happening, something is incorrect in the way you see life. In order to accelerate your expansion, which will always be gradual as long as you're physically focused, but that's beautiful, that's valuable, is to expand, to open up, to receive more joy, to know you're worthy of joy, first of all. Because to think you're not worthy of joy is already an out-of-alignment perspective. As long as you believe you're unworthy of feeling good, you're not going to allow yourself to feel good. So check in before you even try this empowerment thing. See if you believe you're worthy of feeling good or whether that's a bad thing, a sinful thing, an egotistical thing. My teacher told me I should not feel good. It's bad to feel good. It's not in acceptance, it's not in flow. I should feel bad and be really happy about that. I should feel bad and accept it as it is and not move, just don't move. Or are you allowed to be happy? Which is the way the universe communicates with itself. You have to understand that beyond the human level, there is only infinite bliss. There is no justification, there is no cause and effect. If you want to become more expanded, more selfless, more true in your view of life, you have to let go of the human view of life, which is rooted in lack and unworthiness. It's not true. It's valid. It's an expression of the infinite. Like truly, holistically, peacefully good and excitingly good. Not just like, oh yeah, this feels good, but underneath, no, I know I did something that, well, I stole this happiness from someone else and now I think I feel good for a moment. But no, not really. That's not the type of happiness I speak of. The happiness, the feeling good I speak of is a holistic overflowing of goodness. (gasps) Feeling amazing about yourself no matter what. That is what creation is like all the time. 
aside from inside the human mind bubbles, even the human mind spiritual bubbles. If you truly wish to develop a true view, you have to let go of the human view, including re the religious and the spiritual and the self-realization human view. You gotta really be selfless enough to get past all your barriers of sin and unworthiness and being afraid of your arrogance, which is the most arrogant thing you could do. Just be afraid of becoming arrogant. How arrogant of you to think that when you expand, you will become more egotistical. The ego is the substitute servant that takes care of us when we don't. What's the worst way to take care of yourself? By feeling bad all the time and reinforcing that, believing that that's how you should feel. Then, of course, the ego effect kicks in because it wants to take care of you, make sure you're all right, make sure you're safe. Paradoxically, the ego effect free state does not appear humble per se. It appears bright and luminous and shiny, and generous, and free, and epic, and awesome, and radiant, and powerful, and it stands out, but only because no one else does, not because it is arrogant. It stands out because everyone else insists upon something that's not true, and they're closing down their channel. Then someone that opens up will stand out, will see more shiny, will see more arrogant. Listen to the arrogant people in this world. Learn from them. Not in a negative way. Learn from them in a harmonious way. Learn from the confident people. Learn from the shiny people, whether in the field of spirituality or not. I don't care. Can be a business owner that's highly successful. And yes, that may have a lot of misperceptions regarding the nature of reality. But learn from their state somehow and apply it to your own harmonious, integral knowing of the goodness that you are. Start shining yourself. Start radiating. Start feeling more expanded beyond your chest, beyond your body. The more you feel enclosed by the body, the more that is a sign that you're seeing things in an incorrect way. Yes, there is incorrect ways of seeing things. And there is more correct ways of seeing things. More accurate, more relevant, more precise, more harmonious, more in line with all that is, being one inseparable being of infinite abundance. So shine, especially when no one else does. Step on their toes if they insist to put their toes right in front of your feet. Because that's what happens. Because when you start shining, you attract both more of the shininess as well as the opposite, making its unconsciousness more conscious to itself. How will it do that? It will attract certain shiny, standout examples. And it will bash them or embrace them. Learn from them consciously? Thank you. Or learn from them unconsciously? but learn from what they attract, they will. So let everyone learn from you, because that's part of your service. In whatever way they choose to learn, positively or negatively. Accepting or rejecting. In resistance or in flow. Do not be afraid to shine. Or do. Whatever feels best. Whatever feels more precise, accurate, and correct for you. But if we could all light up a little bit more, then no one else would have to stand out as much. Because we all would. And then no one does. A hundred years from now, there won't be spiritual teachers anymore, as we know it. Hopefully. <laughs> be redundant. Be absolutely redundant. Spirituality will cease to exist. Because it's a man-made concept. It does not exist. We're just talking about life. We're just talking about creation. Spirituality is an antidote to having constricted our flow. Oh, are you a spiritual person by any chance? I've just discovered that I don't feel good all the time and I want to explore what it's like to expand myself. Are you a spiritual person? Can I relate to you? That won't exist anymore. 